we've worked on uh, this project several times. We've already submitted the first version uh, to the App Store uh, last week. It got approved. We had our app online. Then on Tuesday, we looked at adding extra features. We added the, the email and social sharing features that, we sub that was submitting a version 2. Um, we um, uh, possibly didn't do a little bit of, of last-minute beta testing to make sure it was all to make sure it was all uh, finished, quote unquote, because uh, it, it was brought to my attention that there was a little bit of a of a quirk in the app. Let me show you what I mean here. I've loaded it up on my device. And I'll load it up in the inspector of Chrome to show you. So I've got I've got the app running on my device. And uh, the whole functionality, we spent a lot of time worrying about the functionality of my classes and all of that, and all of that's fine. We spent time on that that we forgot to look at something else way back when we were talking about the map. Uh, the map of the device. So we had left the map HTML file alone, basically. It had been working all along. And then uh, I had said, well, remember, you need to add the metadata, meta tags and such to the map file to get it up to, the, to spec with the rest of the app. So I trusted you to do that. I did it myself, too. Then we, then we moved on. So then it looks like actually looking at the map it's not working. Uh, so we need to address that, and then we'll release a version 3 of the, of the map. Um, so if you'd like to fully test it or check it to confirm, um, did anyone else, else experience that? I know uh, Joy did. Anyone else? Did you also see, perhaps, did you check out your map and it didn't quite work? Um, so I'm going to assume it's not working. And what's going on here is that we need to edit our code a little bit, and here I've got it loaded up in my in my developer's tools in my console to give me some feedback because just by looking at it here, I don't know what's going on with it. I've got it in my Google Chrome developer's control panel, and so it's giving me these big scary messages. Refused to load script, blah, blah, blah jQuery because it violates the following content security policy directive, etc. Note that script source was not explicitly set, so the default source is used as a fallback. This is going back to something we touched on a while ago regarding the content security policy. This line of code that helps make your app more secure by allowing and disallowing what you can load up in the app. The map screen works by loading an external jQuery library, jQuery 172, from the Google server. So here it's saying, we're refusing to load that file, therefore nothing of this works. Couple of ways to fix this. We can download the jQuery 172 library and put it into our app. That will fix this part going on here and some of these other issues. Unfortunately, that will not fix the big issue that we've got here then. Refuse to load the script, google.com maps API. That one is not a downloadable library that we can have locally in our app. That is an API, that is a JavaScript library that's up online that we have to access from online. So we'll see about dealing with that one. And then it goes on further to say refuse to execute inline script and all of that. So. We, we are able to deal with all of this, and then at the very end, none of it works because an uncut reference, dollar not defined. Well, dollar is not defined, jQuery is not defined, because it refused to load the jQuery external script. So we'll, we'll deal with that, then we'll upload a version 3. Uh, Taco run browser, just to see the, the, the alternative result. So we need to deal with the content security policy and deal with that it's refusing to load certain resources. And on the one hand, it's being protective in that it doesn't allow perhaps malicious code to load. 
but then it's being overprotective in that it doesn't allow our it doesn't allow our previously existing functionality to work. So I'm going to load this one more time about screen in the map, and again we're getting all of this. So let's go back to our project folder and open up the um, in the WW folder, open up the map.html file. In Notepad, m.html. And it's all happening basically from line 9, or thereabouts, wherever you've got your, your CSP, Content Security Policy. And um, I think we touched on it before, but it's a good idea to look at it again. Uh, the way this works is it's a meta tag, content security policy, and then content equals. And then here it's got like a very, very weird syntax that we haven't seen before. Basically, it's divided up into chunks on the based on the, or, or uh, delineated by the semicolon. So this whole part right here is one uh, statement or declaration. Then it goes on to say something else, and it ends at a semicolon. Then it says something else, and that ends at a semicolon. So you see here, style source, it ends at the semicolon. Then media source, it ends at the semicolon. And then child source, it's the last item, so it doesn't have a terminator, so it just ends. And again, the syntax of this is so weird. I would have loved it if it was something like this. Default source colon, self, comma, data, comma, gap, comma, address, comma, and then and then it ends semicolon but it's, no one had that good idea so it's just kinda like this where you can't really tell where does it start where does it end what am I looking at default source is the fallback for everything and then there's specific declarations about style source this is what style sheet files what source of style sheet files are okay for us to load one is self, so anything within the, the folder structure itself. Anything unsafe inline, which is that if we have written CSS code inline in our HTML file. That ends, and then it says media source. So what sort of media can we load, like pictures, multimedia uh, assets. And in here we have the wild card of the asterisk, which is everything. Let everything load. Yes, let every graphic load. Let every media load, every media source. Then we have child source, and this was something that we were experimenting with previously regarding um, the in-app browser. This is to open external <coughs> web resources, child resources, and we allowed the SDCE homepage. So what Chrome is complaining about over here is it's saying refuse to load the script and then the, the location of the script and um, it says note script source was not explicitly set so the default source is used as a fallback default source mentions generically anything within the project structure anything with a protocol of data anything with a protocol of gap, and then specifically this web resource, https sslgstatic.com, and then unsafe eval, which is inline JavaScript. So we don't have anywhere that are listed that we can load the resource https ajax.googleapis.com. So we will add, it'd be better to be specific and say what kind of resource to add than defaulting to the default source, which may be not specific enough. And often it's better to be specific in coding than, than not. So we're going to edit our code to add a brand new little section to the CSP, which will be script source. Uh, I'll add it at the end of what's already there. There is media source, semicolon, child source. Let's add a semicolon there. And then we'll add script source. So this is about loading JavaScript, proper JavaScript. 
safe JavaScript. And the syntax is to add some sort of domain. Notice also the protocol, HTTPS. So the syntax will be the web address of what we're trying to load. And this is saying HTTPS ajax.com ajax.googleapis.com No quotes. Notice the, the way it's written before as an example. So we'll say this script source space https colon slash slash ajax.googleapis.com that's what uh, Google Chrome is complaining saying we can't load this API we can't load this JavaScript library we've never made it okay to connect to this web resource this website notice the way it is it's there's no colon here or anything that sort of makes it look as we've seen it before save that and then run it in the browser here now we're saying we're allowing uh, to use that resource so that's how we write that um, I'm going to run it in the browser just to just to test it. Remember about clearing your console output there. It's useful to kind of clear everything so that you can see things clearly. I'm going to go back to the map. It's still saying then. It's saying different issues, but still still along this line refuse to load the script, blah blah blah, jQuery mobile because it violates the following content security policy. Okay, well, notice how strict it is. We've said, go ahead and load anything from googleapis.com, but we didn't say anything about within the structure itself. We didn't say to use anything within the project itself, which is self, and we didn't say to use anything like inline JavaScript. So as soon as we start to define this security policy we have to be very specific now we've shot ourselves in the foot here which is of course an easy fix but we need to add to it self and we need to add to it unsafe inline and we're going to need to also uh, add that's good that's good that's good we're also going to need to add just looking ahead maps.google.com so I'm going to copy that one Okay, so what it's saying is, we've said the only JavaScript that we can use comes from that address. Well, I also want to have self, in quotes, unsafe inline. I don't think it matters, but just based on the syntax, I'll add it before. Self, unsafe inline. I'm adding that all before the Google API's address. And I already see from the console output that I'm going to need uh, maps.google.com. So now our script source is a little more lenient so that our map works. All of this is coming uh, from contentsecuritypolicy.com. This whole content security policy is what this comment is, is saying up here as well customize your CSP and you can go look at this site or contentsecuritypolicy.com so this should be a better source to make our map work map worked just fine before we put it into the uh, the taco project at that point it wasn't an app it was a web app um, seemed to have worked just fine 
But then when we get it into this point of it being a, a web app, um, there have been instances where taking a web app and putting it as a native app, if, if your security policy isn't tight enough, could cause issues uh, to create vulnerable apps. So the CSP can help uh, mitigating those, minimizing those. Okay, so on this latest version, um, I'm going to go check out the map. It's popping up to allow location. I'll allow, at least it's looking good. It's not looking like a uh, plain old uh, page anymore because now we're allowing it to uh, use this the jQuery mobile and such. It's kind of looking good already. Um, the map itself is not really working, and look at all of this feedback now that I'm getting that it's further complaining about. Refuse to load image. Refuse to load image. Refuse to load another script. And an image, and a style sheet. Refuse to load this image, that image, this image, that image. So you see this, this whole map system is much more complex than, uh, than we would think um, for our app. And then at the very end, it says Google Maps API warning, no API keys. Google Maps uh, made a change about a month ago, a month and a half ago, where now uh, if you want to use the, the Google Map API, you have, to, uh, you have to have a key. You have, a, you have to have a unique identifier to use Google Maps. It used to be for 10, 15 years or whatever, anyone could use Google Maps with the right code. Now you need to identify yourself that you want to use the map. Now, in testing this yesterday, we don't have to worry about this when when we fix it as we're about to do on our app, apparently, because I have tested it. So this alarmist note right here, we don't have to worry about it. There is a link there to go look it up. What do you need to do? And it's not that complicated. You, go, you need to go get a key, and then you add the key to your code, and it works. Uh, this warning that appears here, notice it's, it's, a, it's a warning rather than an error, so it still works. It's just a warning that perhaps eventually it will completely not work unless you have your unique API key. And it, I seem to, to notice that just in testing it in the browser, it complains, not actually in the device. As for fixing the more important errors, these big scary red ones, we can ignore the yellow one, the red ones that one, to fully fix this, we would need to add more of these CSP definitions. We would need to have image dash source. Because it says there's no image source that you've defined. We would add image source and we would add this address, csi.gstatic.com. And we would just need to go in and add all of these declarations. And what this reminded me of when I was putting the finishing touches on this last time, was that when I last taught this, you know, four months ago, um, we got to this issue and this was a little bit more trouble than it was worth because we have to define all of these variations for loading the images. Down here there's one about fonts. And even when all of that is set up, it kept, it kept finding a uh, these resources, after, after testing and testing the map, it kept saying refuse to load this, refuse to load that, because it would keep loading these dynamically generated files that were very hard to then deal with on a, on a global basis. So I'm showing you what, what the issue is of the, of the map not wanting to work, and it's a deeper fix then I would really want to get to, but I'm showing you that this is what the problem is. So, for all intents and purposes, the way we will make, we will, the way we will have our map work, 
is a really advanced way. Watch. I'm going to move this, put it right here, and then it works. What did, what did I do? I commented out the CSP. So now that is not there to police what resources can load in the project, and the project will load perfectly. Is that the best solution? No. But for us at the moment, I think it's fine. It's a good enough type of solution in that it does let the map work. Uh, we're connecting to Google resources, which are some of the most secure out there. If we were connecting to our own website and that sort of thing, or uh, third-party resources, then I definitely want that CSP up and running. But for us, load the map, map works. Again, that's like... Um, do you want to um, write further declarations in the CSP or just comment it out? And again, if you, you you do see the result, it's the Google Map. You try to get directions, and it is going to complain here now that you do need an API key to actually get the turn by turn directions, but that only happens on the uh, browser. I'm going to run this on a real device to confirm. Just a moment ago, I had opened the I had opened the the one before I made any changes. Looks terrible here. I'm going to load the latest version where I comment out the CSP to my device. We've been testing it here in the browser that it kind of works. Then I'm going to test it on the real device to confirm that it does work. And that'll be our version 3, Android version code 3 of our app. It's loading up on my device. I'm getting the splash screen, going to about, going to map. It's loading up visually how it's supposed to. It's showing that I'm here, and then I'm clicking get directions. It's giving me directions. It's telling me to do a U-turn to go into the campus. So it is working on the real device. On the browser, it still seems to be a little nitpicky. But on the real device, it is working. And for the moment, the quote-unquote fix that I'm going to recommend is to comment out the CSP. I would want to upload this new fixed version. I would want to upload this version that works to the App Store. Uh, we didn't do completely our due diligence, perhaps, and we've uploaded an app out there that people can download and see that the map doesn't work, and then complain and give us one star. So we should upload a fully functioning app. This requires then, I, I've fixed my M file. We need to go to our config XML file. If we're going to upload a new version of this APK, we need to update our config XML file. Let's go back out of the WW folder so we can edit config XML. And line 2, Android version code must be a new version code. Even though this is a minor little tweak, it's a brand new version in the eyes of the App Store. So you need to put that on version 3. You can decide if you would like to change this version, which is just sort of like uh, as a courtesy, but I will change it. Today, it's today again, the 18th. Oops. 1808. So I'm changing the version code. Plain version, the one that the user sees. I'm leaving it as 1.2, but I'm changing this minor version number. done it a few times now, but 
I still don't have it memorized. I need to pull up my handout to compile one more time the release version of the um, APK. You'll need your JKS file. You'll need your uh, you'll need your key store file. the handout, as we've done several times, taco build android space dash dash release space dash dash space dash dash key store equals wherever you've put your key store. I've had mine very easy to access on my F drive. space dash dash alias and then the alias that you've got inside of your key store. So we'll need to build another one based on your credentials, your key store file, JKS file, supplying your password as we've done before. I got an error, but I'm just going to simply try to run the command one more time. Sometimes that simply works. I might have misspelled something. So I closed my command prompt. That sometimes works. I'm going to close my command prompt. Let's try it one more time before I try to troubleshoot. It's odd. I do see sometimes that it says no, no, uh, what does it say? No valid environment present. This whole time I've been, these months, these weeks, I've been using that same file over and over. And I don't know why I would give a weird error about no valid environment. Um, so let's see here. Oh, I see. I see my mistake there. I misspelled my JKS file. Build option, key store, not found. So let me confirm. Okay, I didn't get the error this time, but it didn't create the release-ready version, and I can tell here because it says you created the release unsigned version, which is not acceptable to the apps at all, although it does say Android release here. Hmm. I still wouldn't trust it because it didn't ask me for my password. Let me confirm that I spell this properly. Spelling here. I wrote uh, single dash key store. I need a double dash key store. So the single dashes and the double dashes clearly then are important. didn't complain about incorrect OS. I, I, again, sometimes that's a mystery error that it gives us for some reason. Asking for password.
So in my case, this is probably just coming down to misspelling some things. Uh, but we've done this process before, and you've seen me, you've seen me do the process, and it's just about most likely just putting in my password properly. There we go. So I misspelled my password, and then I see the result, Android released uh, APK. I'll go into my folder. I'll go into my project folder, platforms, Android. I'm going to pull out the APK file. Build. Outputs APK, and got the release with the latest timestamp put it on my root level over here version 3 So then I'll do the next step about uh, re-uploading it to the uh, to the App Store. I'll do that one briefly since we've done it before, but I'll just do it one more time, uh, and we'll go on. Any questions at this point? Okay, I'm going to load up my uh, my developer's account over at Amazon. Developer.amazon.com. Under the uh, developer's portal here, the dashboard notifications, I submitted my uh, the last version 2 that we uploaded. And then on the same day at some point, it went live. So it took my version 2 and it was available. Now what I would need to do is create a version 3. So I would go back to my, um, to my apps. I would go in then and uh, add upcoming version. The version 2 APK file is there. I need to replace that with version 3, add some new release notes, and submit again. So I'll remove that. Upload the newest version. It shows then version code 3, 8. Um, everything looks good there. Latest date, version code, devices. Down at the bottom for, for my own self, I'll uh, change that to 3. This is the third version of the file. I have the check mark on the binary file, and then I go to release notes and add some notes here. So we'll say uh, 
again, we can write this however we want. We can look at the examples of other apps uh, just to kind of see another one I'm going to load up um, on my device here. Twitter said it, there were new updates, so just to see what's how Twitter does it, read more. What's new? A few updates to make Twitter even better. Happy tweeting. But then no explanation of what was updated, really. So let's see if there's some other app example. Um, let's see what Google Plus says on updates. What's new? Consistent search history across devices, performance enhancements, and bug fixes. So there's a big range of how developers promote what has changed in their app. So perhaps what we'll say here is uh, bug, bug fixes and improvements to map feature. That should be enough, so then I'll save that. You can be as detailed as you want to let people what they're in for when they update. Maybe I could make it be like urgent bug fix map. Map fixes. Just to show uh, to your to your friends and or to your users that you're serious and committed to making changes and updates and improvements to your apps. So at this point I'll submit that. Probably pretty quick. Probably by the time we leave today, um, the app will be available. So it's been submitted, and we've got a version three of it. And this is the this is that process. And I would do similar things on any of the other app stores, but. Um, We've gone through the process and created the account and the store listing and now uploaded, uploaded at least one version 2. And it'll be available eventually. It's less stringent than, than over at the um, iTunes store, for example which is good because then we have less barriers to entry. And so here, just out of curiosity, I'm loading up again the latest. And so I see different uh, people of the class that added their app. Added their Very good. So um, any questions? OK, let me help you just one moment. So at this point, uh, I'm going to pause the recording to shift gears a little bit, make sure we're all on the same page. Then uh, we're going to look at these other aspects of the app development process. Um, so we'll take our break slightly early. S uh, 6.55, we'll be back at 7.05, and then we'll do the next phase.